Hello, I'm Jenny with the Go Box, and it's a beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm getting ready to do some watercolor with you guys, and today we are visiting Tuscany. It's kind of cool. When we uh, paint, we get to visit and travel the cheap way. <laughs> so I'm going to show you exactly what to do, how to recreate this picture, and keep in mind ours will all be different from each other's. Mine won't be exactly the same as this. There'll probably be some different contrast changes just because, um, you know, completely mixing from scratch, doing a whole painting from scratch. Um, they they do end up having a few little differences, but a lot of times it ends up being a happy thing. Like, oh, hey, I, I like the second version better. So I'm gonna show you how to do everything, but let's talk about what supplies you'll need. So today we are not using the uh, Posca white paint marker and we're not using the black uh, micron marker for illustration. It's all paint today. And um, we're gonna use every single one of the colors that came in your kit, if you have the kit. If not, I'll tell you what colors I'm going to use. I'll show them on paper and you can uh, come up with your own paints to match what I have here. All right, so coffee brown. That is a go-to color I use on just about every painting. Lemon yellow. Another go-to color. These two I often mix together. We'll do a lot of that in this painting. Uh, ocean blue, beautiful, makes a beautiful green. We don't use a ton of this on this painting, but there are some good spots. Actually, maybe we use more than I said. We have greenery here and here and back here and along the road here, so we're gonna be using a bit of blue. I probably gave myself too little. Uh, plum violet, I wanted to give this painting a purple base. You can see that with the hills and then the lavender field. Back here, I mix a little blue with it, a little of the ocean blue, so it take, make, takes uh, kind of a bluish violet sort of look. Um, poppy red, of course, we've got the field of poppies here. There we go. And finally, now this one I wouldn't put on your palette quite yet because we don't use it till a bit later and it dries really fast. This is the Black India ink. If you have just black, watercolor paint that will work just fine so don't worry about that so those are our colors we're going to do a bit of mixing i just pop the colors down in the little wells and then i do most of my mixing up here and then i've got a blank space here i can mix if needed we do want to have our two brushes or whatever brushes you have i think this one's stained with india ink so I have uh, Princeton watercolor brushes, which I love this particular brand. And I have a round number six and a round number two. And this is the 4050 line of Princeton brushes, which you can buy through us on gobox.com. I think it's $14 for the set. You can find them at Michael's um, if you like, but either way, just some kind of round watercolor brushes. I'm gonna set this aside. We are going to wanna have a pencil and we're gonna do some quick sketching, nothing that's too crazy, it's pretty easy. So don't um, don't get scared about that. A lot of people get worried when we talk about sketching, but it's super easy with this painting. So I, I actually taped my watercolor paper down. I just use this typical green or blue painter's tape and I, I tape a border around it. I didn't do it on this one. You can see how the paint goes all the way to the edge. You can have it do that if you like but I do love the way it looks when there's a little white border around the edge. And I didn't use a ruler or anything, I just kind of eyeballed it. And it usually comes out looking pretty decent. So let's go ahead and get started. Take a deep breath, whatever beverage you have. I have water. <laughs> it's a little early here in the day, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not getting the wine out yet. But uh, do definitely try to relax. It's a lot of fun and if you don't like the painting you did, try it again. That's how you get better. Practice, practice, and practice some more. So let's take our pencil, have a look at our paper, and I'm going to first have a sketch in this hill. And at the top of the hill, that's where the Tuscan Villa sits. Then this is gonna come down here, and then there's a little road alongside it. You can see I tried to paint little tire ruts in that. But I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So let's find about the halfway point between the bottom and top here and just sketch across. Make it a nice flat area. It can be a little, 
little bumpy. We, we're going to put trees to cover this up anyway. And sketch really light. You don't want to have to battle with pencil getting smeared in your paint the whole time. So I do keep my sketches super duper light. I'm going to make a mark about, it's about half an inch to three quarters of an inch right here. And I'm going to connect this hill down to that. So flat up here with enough space for the villa. And then it just slopes down. Our poppy field's going to be in here. And the rest of this is pretty easy to sketch. We've got a, I decided to, I really wanted purple, a lot of purple in this painting. So I did a lavender field rather than a vineyard. And I'm just gonna go, it's, it's really close to the same halfway point, maybe a little top, higher up. And I'm gonna do a slightly sloped, so slightly rounded line here. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm making my pencil lines a little darker than I should. So I'll be battling with the pencil marks, <laughs> the pencil smearing into the paint, but I don't want you guys to have to do that. And now let's talk about mountains. I knew in our last painting, we did mountains on the wood slice painting. That was this one right here. So when I talked about, if you watched that one, I talked about how it's really easy to end up with what looks kind of like a, a gnome hat or a witch hat. When in reality, painting, or painting, when in reality, mountains are quite a bit wider than they are tall. Now they are tall, but they're gonna be, you know, three to four times wider than they are tall. So these are just hills somewhere there in Tuscany. And I'm gonna just jump up above this line. It looks like it's about quarter inch to half inch. And I'm gonna sketch upward, make a slightly pointed top. These are kind of rounded mountains. And then come down and I'll do a secondary shorter smaller one and then it's just going to go back behind here so our villa will end up probably overlapping that a bit no biggie so this already looks like a landscape and I will guide you through how to draw a very simple villa I've done a lot of Tuscany paintings over the years primarily with acrylic painting in the uh, Van Gogh studio and the villas are very square. I've looked at lots and lots of pictures and yes, they're very you know, kind of plain style square with that red stucco or red tile roof and, and golden stucco facing on the hat on the villa itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have us draw three vertical lines. These two are about half an inch apart. So that's we're seeing a three quarter view of the building. And then this one and this one are about an inch apart. So you'll have a long side and a short side. So here, I'm gonna draw this line first. It's about maybe a half inch in from here. I mean, I'm sorry, not quarter inch to half inch, somewhere in between there. And this line itself is probably, it's just, just shy of half an inch in height. And let's jump over here. You could use a ruler if you want, but I have two vertical lines and this next one that we put over here, you want it to be close to double the space that this is. So I'm gonna go way down here. There I go. And now let's connect these two. So all three of these should be equal height. If this one's a little shorter, you're, it's just gonna slope down a little bit. You'll have a little bit more forced perspective. Oops, knock your paint bottles over here. Just sketch across here. You can see it does slant down slightly on mine, but I don't think it did on this one. Now the roof pitch is really low and that's another thing I noticed when looking at pictures of Tuscan villas. It's not a super tall pointy roof like you would see in other places. It's very, very low. So what I'll do is I'll find the middle point on this line and I'm going to jump up just a very short distance. This is, I don't even know, I need to look at a ruler. It's probably, I think these are half inch and this is probably a quarter inch. I always use my acrylic brushes as guides <laughs> rather than a ruler because I know, oh, this one's a quarter inch wide, this one's an inch wide. So there I did this really low pitch roof. This, you're going to parallel this line. So going straight across, you're gonna end it short. It's not gonna be quite as long because you wanna match this slope right here as close as possible. There we go. Got my little low pitch roof structure. And I'm sure there's some reason why they're designed that way. It probably has to do with the weather there, I'm guessing, or maybe it's just the style that, that they like them. And then we are gonna do, we're gonna sketch in this couple of these little trees. 
These are the Tuscan cypress trees. And if you guys are you know familiar with Van Gogh's Starry Night, he has one of those trees right in the foreground down here. Might be a fun painting to do it as a watercolor. Okay, so let's go ahead and scooch over this way a little bit. Maybe, I don't know, maybe close to half an inch or an inch. And I'm literally just gonna lightly sketch a tall, pointy, wiggly structure. And we paint it in, all these outlines will be covered up. Now you can do a couple more here. These kind of remind me of those Arborvita <laughs> trees that we have out here. My, a lot of my neighbors have them because they they've built, the neighborhood was built in the 90s. I think they were really popular then. <laughs> and then let's go ahead and sketch some shrubbery this way. Maybe another Tuscan Cypress here that's kind of a peekaboo view. This will just give us a nice guide for filling in. And then we'll just kind of, we don't need to sketch this part that goes in front of the house. We'll, we'll do that just by layering with paint. And if your pencil lines ended up kind of dark, you'll want to erase a little bit. Like my, my house, my villa is really, really pretty dark and it ends up with a fairly light color on it. So I'm going to very, very lightly erase and you can do the same. You just want to be able to see it, but you don't need to see it from across the street. <laughs> and I've got some, I guess that these are really dark. So don't worry about erasing these lines in between unless you want to. And then we just have to draw the road in. Just a little rutted dirt road that is probably well-traveled <laughs> by the people who live and work here, whatever it is, it's a vineyard or it's somebody's home. But I just, uh, this road starts here, go goes along the side of this and it just sort of disappears behind. What I'm guessing is that it probably winds around this mountain and comes up on the other side. So this is maybe, close to half an inch above and I'm just going to follow it until I get to about here and then it, I'll just let it disappear and then we'll, we'll paint ruts in that later. But now we've got our landscape pretty well sketched out and do work on erasing if you need. If any of your lines appear dark enough that you think that pencil lead would smear too much in your paint. I think I'm pretty good. A lot of the colors we use on here are dark. So mainly I was concerned with the villa itself because it's, it's the one thing that's pretty light. So I'm going to brush off my eraser shavings. If you don't want to have to deal with that, next time you're at an art store, pick up an art gum eraser. Those won't leave the little funky uh, shavings and they're super great. I just, I have one somewhere. Oh, right here. And it's obviously been dropped on the ground because it's got dog hair in it. That's great. I think I'll skip that one. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with the sky, which is a streaky watery blue, primarily on the right side. And then we've got the sun coming in on the left. So there's a little overlapping where it turns slightly greenish through here, but it's not like an, a crazy ugly green that's gonna be an issue at all. And what I wanna do is I wanna take, dip my, I'm using my number six round. I'll dip it in the water. And I'm going to place a little water in this upper well here, and then I'll stir a little blue into it. A little bit goes a long way. You can always add more, more blue or more water, whatever you need. I usually start out kind of light and then I realize I need to add more and more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this kind of upward, starting way on the other side, left side of this main mountain here. I'll do this kind of upward sweeping brush stroke to indicate clouds. So I'm leaving some bits of white and I want to get some darker spots. So I'm going to add a little more blue to this and you can even overlap the wet. That gives you a really cool look here. If you find that you've got too much blue and it's a little too intense, wash your brush and just take the wet brush and smudge some of this out with just water. It makes some really cool, effects in the sky and I just love doing skies in watercolor because they're kind of like a accidental <laughs> accidental uh, cloud sort of thing going on you don't have to work too hard to get uh, these awesome clouds so don't worry if you accidentally overlap your cypress tree it gets a really dark green later so it will be covered don't overlap your villa that's the one thing you want to if you go in the roof, that's all right, but you don't want to overlap the um, the building itself because that has to be a, a light 
tannish gold color. Right now I'm just using water and spreading out what I already have on here. And I'm gonna sort of rewake this over here with some water. That's the cool thing about watercolor. You can just sort of go back and reinvigorate some of these colors that were dropped in there. Another cool thing that if you guys wanna play around with sometime, you can uh, experiment with while this sky is wet or whatever it is you're painting, sprinkle some salt on there and let it dry. And the salt absorbs watercolor in the spots where the salt was dropped. And it makes these really cool sky effects, which they look super cool in a um, galaxy type sky. All right, so I'm just gonna use some water and fix up any areas that I feel like need it. Come a little closer to my mountains. I notice I, I do have a few spots where it's just white. I think I've got something funky over here on the paper that's uh, causing the paint and water to sort of beat up. So I'm wondering if maybe, oh, I've got red paint on my hands. I didn't even realize that. I wonder if I've had some, something, um, some residue on my fingers or something when I tape this down. All right. Yes, one of my, my poppy red bottles, one of them leaked and it got all over the handle of the Bombay Black. And so when I unscrewed the handle, <laughs> I must have really, really gotten my thumb there. Okay, so let's add the yellow here, but we want it to be a light yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some water up here and then stir in a tiny bit of yellow and add more water to lighten it to a really light pale, pale yellow. And I'll start way up here in the corner. Yeah, that's really light. And I'm gonna come down and maybe I'll just streak in some darker bits of yellow that's just without mixing with water, but very small amount. And then you will get to the point where you want to overlap the blue a bit. And it does turn slightly greenish right where they overlap, but it doesn't cause any kind of issue with this particular painting. I was a little worried about that when I worked on the first copy of this and did the design, but it's happy with the result. You can bring this yellow down as far as you like. So here's my original. You can see very slight differences. I probably had a little more water playing around here with the sky. So this definitely has a very streaky look with lots of little color blooms going on in it, which I think is really awesome in a sky. So we're gonna move along. I see a couple spots I missed. You can always go back and rework the sky a bit if needed, just a little at a time though, because it does um, become very easy to overwork your paper. I've done it a lot. <laughs> Watercolor is new to me. Uh, for those of you, if this is your first video watching with me, this is my third video teaching, my third ever class teaching watercolor to a public group. Um, I've taught my teachers in the studio some watercolor paintings, but uh, it's, it's fairly new to me at two years. I've been teaching myself and, and doing videos and, and getting some idea of how this all works. So in the lo long term, uh, two years is not a huge amount of time, but I feel like every time I teach one, every time I design one, I'm learning more and more and getting better and better. At least I hope so. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and let's get our, this hill, put in, but you know what? I actually, I'm gonna change change that idea. I wanna, before our water gets too polluted with color, I wanna get the base color going on our villa. So that's kind of a brownish gold. I've already got yellow up here. So I'm gonna tap a little, or dot in a little bit of brown there. That's your coffee brown, maybe a little more yellow. And so you get this really light, golden wash and I'm just going to actually fill in the building with that. If you want to use a smaller brush you can. All 
I'll show you a cool idea that I have been doing a lot lately. I'll take my little number two brush and I'm gonna dip it in water and I'm gonna dot in just a little more brown into this mix. And I'll take and I'll trace along, just a little more brown. While this is still wet, I'll trace along the lines here and even under the roof. You have to work kind of fast because it does at first look like an outline, but then I'm gonna wash the brush and just use water and just kind of spread that out so it doesn't look like a harsh outline. It just looks like a shaded area. Other things you can do, I have a little more yellow in the center here. I could wash the brush, put a little more yellow in here, if you want. It's your own villa, you can paint it however you like. You're the artist. We will paint the roof a little bit later. I, I think the sky is maybe a little bit wet and I don't want that red to bleed out into the sky. That would be a tragedy. So for now, I'm just going to leave the roof white. And now we can start painting our hillside, which has so many different colors in it. We have uh, a little bit of outside of the poppies. We have a little bit of red in there. We have the golden brown, very similar color to what we put up on the villa there. We have green and we have the green is deepened with a little blue. And then later on, I put, on, put in some darker bits. That's where we use the India ink to get these really dark colors for like, whether these are rocks or maybe a, stumps from trees, whatever they, whatever they are. I wanted a little contrast in there, having some darker bits to sort of catch the eye down in there. But let's go ahead and get the base coat on this. I wanna use my number six brush and I'll go ahead and mix up a little more of this golden brown. Throw a little water in there. I have a really bad habit of working quick and not washing my brush between dipping it in colors. And I need to get better at that because then I just pollute all my colors. So here we go. Let's just go ahead and get a good coat of this on there. You can experiment with brushing some water on first and then brushing the color on top of the water. You can leave some white areas that can end up looking like, like here's our sun source. It could end up looking like the sun is lighting up some areas here, which is a super cool thing. And I almost always run out of paint too fast. I'm gonna add a little more brown to my color here. I want it to be just a bit darker as, as we get away from here, which is sun baked light sunbaked, there's no foliage there. It's gonna get darker in here. So you can see that already. Sometimes just use water to spread some areas out. That's one of the things that takes some getting used to is how much water to paint to use. And I think I mentioned this before, I actually prefer working with cake colors. I'll show you a kit that I love. I guess I don't have it in here. I might have to get up or holler at a family member to grab it. It's on the kitchen counter <laughs> for, uh, and it, it's something I'm getting a wholesale license through this company so I can sell them to you guys too. It uh, is a Japanese brand that I just love. I think it's a great. So I threw in a little more brown here. And yeah, I'm just gonna finish off with some darker in here and I'll use some water to smear that around or spread it out. And definitely my watercolor paper has, I don't know if it was oil or what, soap. It's got this funny texture. Well, I'm just gonna work with it. Maybe it'll be one of those things that's like, oh, look what I did, it was a happy little accident. All right. So now I want to, we have this nice golden color. These areas that are white, remember we have our very pale yellow up in here from the sky. You could take a little yellow and some water, not much, and you could brush some of that in these white or lighter areas. And then it does just sort of encourage that idea that the sun is lighting up this side 
because this would be in full sunlight here. And I'm gonna clean up around my villa. Even though this gets some, this gets a lot of shrub, shrubbery stuff going on here. So my pencil lines, which I can see right now, will be covered up. Now, and occasionally you might have one of these things happen where you end up with a splatter of paint in the sky. That happens to me all the time. Oh, and it was brown, how great. So I'll usually just kind of spread that around. You can brush water on it and tear off a little piece of towel and blot it up. And then I just know that I'll probably have to go back and retouch that with a little blue later on. Or maybe when it dries, it'll just sort of disappear. That would be the cool thing. <laughs> While this dries a bit, let's paint our road in. And I made that a little more yellow than this. So this has a bit more brown in it than I wanna have here. I wanna have, I've got a little bit of brown. I spend a lot of time mixing color. So I'm gonna add more yellow to this. That's about right. And then I'll add a little water and just brush it in over here. So it's not a huge difference. You could even just brush some yellow over it. It's just kind of a sun-baked little dirt road here. We'll do some things to set these two apart. Primarily it's adding some darker browns and deeper colors and some sort of burnt sienna, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. You can. Dip your brush in just the brown and very just the tip of the bristles. You can just smear some brown in there to deepen it just a bit, if needed. It didn't make a huge difference. All right, so far so good. We've got some purple we're gonna be using in a bit, but I want to continue developing this area with some of this almost terracotta color. Gosh, my thumb looks like I just had like cut myself or something. <laughs> so this, uh, yeah, it's, it's like a bordering between terracotta and burnt sienna, which is an acrylic paint color I use a lot, just a reddish rusty brown. So we are going to use red, but keep in mind it goes a long way. And so you want to dot your, I'm using my number six round, you want to dot just the very tip of the bristles in there and mix it in. You can see already how fast it colors this. If you get too much and it becomes too pink, put a little more brown in there. And you can use your little test sheet of paper to see. I feel like it could be more red. I'm always pretty careful. That actually looks pretty accurate. It's like a reddish terracotta. And I'm going to go ahead and streak some of this in here. I'll add a little more water to it and I'll just sort of streak it in wherever. Maybe wash the brush and use just water and spread it out. So we're just looking for random bits of color. Because we know dirt isn't always one solid color. You've got some clay earth, you've got all kinds of soil. And I could throw a little more brown in there just to have another color and play around with that. I'm just very, very haphazardly streaking this in and at any point you can wash the brush and just use the damp brush and smooth things around. I'd say the disadvantage with cake colors, and maybe this is why I always mix such a small amount of paint, is like with the liquid, liquid water colors, you just use a dropper and you put on as much as you need. But with the cakes, you're having to 
dip it in, dip the brush in water, swirl it around, add it here, add it here, add it here to the palette, and then add more and more. So you don't ever mix a whole lot of paint at once. I bet you that is why I always feel like I don't mix quite enough. So the ground being very streaky is good. So I'm just playing around with adding some more browns here and there, especially away from the sunlight back in here where it would be dark and more shady. There, not bad, that'll work. That'll work. I do want to actually, looking at this again, I do want to get a little of this reddish brown along here just to differentiate this slope from the road. I'll just spread that out with a bit of water. If it ever feels too red, you can just, you can go in with a little yellow or you can go in with a little brown or both and change it right there on your paper. And you can always go back if you have something that ended up being more of a solid stripe. You can always go back with just a damp brush and sort of reinvigorate that, wake it back up and move it around. All right, let's see how my little spot in the sky looks. I don't really think I'm gonna have to do anything with it. That's good. That startled me <laughs> when it was brown. I couldn't tell what color it was. I was hoping it was dark blue. Okay, so let's start working with some purple now. Yay, one of my favorite colors. I uh, really like having the contrast of the, the purple and red, which are nice complementary colors here, right across from each other. I think that looks cool. All right, so we're going to start by just filling in the base of the mountains in one color, and then we come in and we're going to use a darker color in the areas that are away from the sunlight, just to give our mountains um, some more depth, make them look a little more 3D. So let's go ahead and wash our brush, number six brush. We're gonna use that for most of this painting. We only use the number two for the centers of the poppies and some of the smaller poppies, and then of course the windows and any little small areas that you need to fill in. So let's, uh, let's take our purple plum violet. I'm gonna mix a little water with it up here. I'm gonna test it out. I think it needs to have, no, that looks pretty good. You could mix a little blue with it, just a small amount. Yeah, that's a little closer to what I put back there in that original. Unfortunately, I didn't take pictures when I designed it. It just got started and probably planned on taking pictures and got really into it and then realized at the end, oh, oops. <laughs> and I've done it twice. Let's go ahead and get a base coat on these hills. Beautiful purple Tuscan hills. Just filling them in with a light wash right now. So of course, we're gonna layer. I didn't mix quite enough paint. This is partly why I've been starting us off with small watercolors because I want something manageable. I've done like full eight and a half by 11 sheets. I'm really impressed by people that do really huge watercolors, but I haven't got to that point yet. I've got a couple little peekaboo gaps of the mountain back here between these trees. Don't worry if you overlap your trees a bit. Like I said earlier, that dark color we paint on those will cover anything up. Okay. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I definitely am. I love watercoloring. It is so 
fun and I thought I'd never like it because it's so different than what I'm used to. But I really do love it. I spend times time at night at the kitchen counter while everybody's watching TV. Just playing around, learning. <laughs> All right, let's start working on our lavender field. And the lavender field has uh, bluish purple in it and it has reddish purple in it. So I wanted to do several different colors going on. I'm gonna start with the bluish purple. So we're gonna take our plum violet, a little water. Let's make a decent sized glob of it. I never make enough. And let's put a little more blue in it than we did up here. I've got my little practice sheet of paper. Look at that. So many different purples. That's what I love about it. You can tweak those to your heart's content. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to go along here just with one stripe. And then I'm going to make, leave a little gap and make another stripe. And up here, all the stripes will touch. So let's see, I'll do a demonstration here. We've got our hill. It's going to be like this. Where they're more spread out down here and closer together back here. So that's gonna help give it perspective, like they're rows of lavender. So just leaving a little white gap. It won't be white forever. Obviously. Thinking of it like a vineyard, they're planted the same in rows. There. That works. And now in the gaps, I'm going to paint in a slightly different tone of purple. It's going to be more like what this is. So I'll get this up here, a little bit of blue mixed in. So I basically remade this color. But now I'm going to put a tiny bit of red, just a little bit. As you guys learned, as I just learned right now, it goes quick. I mean, it'll, the red will overpower it really quick. So here's my little tester. I think this is pretty good to brush in between, overlap. We have much more layering and some greenery to put in here, but this will get our base foundation going. Nice plummy reddish violet. Blend it in here with the blue and they'll just sort of mix together if they're both still wet, which is good. And if you feel like your back hills need another coat of paint on them, you can do that. I think, I think I'm okay for right now. Let's see what it would look like. I feel like I want a little more blue back in there. Oh, real easy to overdo it. So this left side, that's all I'm gonna repaint right now because we're gonna paint a darker color over here. So the left side of each mountain, this one can kind of overlap down in here. If you feel like it needs another coat. I definitely had a very light wash on there. So another coating of paint didn't hurt. Right now it's gonna look funny and because it's darker on the left side than it is on the right, which is opposite of what we're going to be shooting for in a few minutes. But there's no need to paint another coat in here because we're going to layer a darker color in. I'm going to let this dry, this area here, and I'm gonna skip back over this way and we're gonna get some greenery going. So I need a little more ocean blue. And if you feel like you wanna use like an old ceramic plate for a palette, that works great. These wells, they don't give us a ton of space. I did like that they're small mixed in with large, so then I can use this for mixing and this for the actual colors. But uh, yeah, if you need more, more palette space, you can use a paper, I mean a ceramic plate. I've also got like one of these. 
Apparently someone got acrylic paint in there, probably my daughter. Okay, so let's go ahead. I've got a blue, blue up in here, so I'm gonna just mix a green up in there. So we'll start with blue. Make sure you wash the brush. Throw in some yellow. And this is gonna make a very vivid teal, which we need to tone down just a bit. I think I'll put a little more blue back in there. Did it did it teal. So I wanna tone it down with a little bit of coffee brown. And then I wanna darken it. So this is a great color here, but it's not quite dark enough. You see the difference? So I darken it by adding the tiniest dot of Bombay Black India ink. And you can see how fast that overpowered that color and now it's gray, <laughs> which means I'm gonna wash the brush and I'm gonna come in with more blue and more yellow. And yeah, you'll, you'll notice the India ink, it just comes in and is like, ha, oh, everything's dark now. But this color here is what I want. It's got the India ink mixed in it. So it's a little bit deeper. I could even mix a little bit more. Let's see how that looks compared. Yeah, a little deeper. Even a little more brown would be fine. If it's too green, the whole thing just looks way too vibrant and not quite right. Okay. Let's go ahead and fill in our Tuscan Cypress. Feel free to use your number two brush, especially on some of these little guys. For now, just fill it in right down to the hill. <laughs> I have to be careful. Luckily I only got on here. I've done that so many times. <laughs> I guess it, painting just makes me too excited. So it's gonna look funny because they're just ending right at the top of the hillside, but we're gonna come in and create some creepy, creepy crawly footage, footage. <laughs> when I said creepy, it threw me off because I don't want you to, I don't want this to have a creepy feel. I mean like creepy crawly foliage. Creepy footage, oh boy. <laughs> Mixing horror and paint. I'm sure there's somebody out there with that kind of video. <laughs> I'm still using my number six brush, but feel free to use a smaller one. What I want to do now is I'm going to come in and <laughs> dab on a little more paint, cover up my pencil that's showing. And I want to make some of what I call the creepy crawly foliage coming down the hill from the villa. So it just kind of grows out in little fingers, like almost like ivy. Let's go along the base of the little villa here and we'll create some trees in front of it in just a bit too. But I'm just sort of spreading this out. It's not like a lawn, it's more like overgrowth of ivy or something like that. I'll bring this down a bit. Maybe some water. You can just kind of let your brush run out of paint too. If these look too planned out, like has a stripey gap that's equal length between each little finger of ivy. You can come in and mess that up a little bit so you don't end up with a pattern. It just kind of looks like nature's sort of taking over. I've got a dark dot on my roof, but I think the red roof will cover that up. I'm going to mix up a little more green and more ocean blue. So blue, wash, 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 yellow, mix, mix, mix. This is that deep dark teal that I told you 
we were not quite aiming for, but you can layer some of that on top any area that you want to feel a little greener. If it ended up being too brown, you can definitely layer. It's got the, the darker base underneath, so this is just going to layer over that so it's not gonna be super bright like it is in the pan. And let's see how that looks down here. I'm gonna get some of that down in here and then we'll, we'll also mix the brown and black in it too so we get some darker bits. So this would be greenery from the poppy field, whatever else is sort of taking over here in this wild field that's growing. I just like to do patches of green because you think about it, there's leaves and poppy plants do produce a lot of foliage and it's not super pretty. My mom has the most beautiful poppies. She has such a green thumb, which I did not inherit. I can't even hardly keep succulents alive. It's ridiculous. I'm getting better, but I'm not quite where she, I'll never be where she is. But she has these poppies all over in her yard and they're like dinner plate size. And the greenery on them is not super attractive. Like if you see just the poppy plant without the flower, it's like, eh, that kind of looks like dandelion weeds. <laughs> it's got a lot of green foliage though to produce, you know, just a few flowers. It's like big, huge thing of green. So I guess that's what we got going on here. That was my point. All right, I'm going to mix, I have my teal here. I'm going to mix a little brown into that. A little more blue. I want to make more color since I ran out. Yellow. And this time I am going to throw just the tiniest little bit of India ink in there. Gosh, it's amazing how fast that takes over. But having some real dark down in here in this lower corner is good. It's going to give our painting some nice perspective and definitely create the look of the sun, the light source being over here and all of this being in shadow. It doesn't look super pretty right now. I'm just gonna be honest and say that. This is how it looks at this stage, not overwhelmingly gorgeous. But it will set a nice base for these beautiful poppies that we're going to put on there later. I do want to get some greenery around the house. I probably should have done that before I added too much black to this. But you know, we're just going to skip around, pollute my yellow. <laughs> and up along the house, I think of this like, like you can dab it like this. Think of them like little shrubs. And if you want, you know, here at the corner, you could have one kind of growing up, almost like ivy growing on the house. If it's a slightly different green shade, that's okay. Just brush it down in here so it doesn't look like it's suddenly plopped on there. I actually feel like the green on this new version is a lot more natural looking than that green. So I do like that. I'm using my number two brush just so I have a small, little bit of control over what I'm doing there. And then if you need to touch up any of these larger Tuscan cypresses, feel free to do that. Not bad. Not bad. One of my trees, this one looks a little crooked. You could probably fill out this bottom area a little bit to kind of offset that, like an optical illusion. And boy, do we ever need to get a riff put on our villa, but we're not going to do that quite yet, just because we have a lot of wet paint around it. What I want to do right now is take this color probably your number two brush. And we're going to do a row of shrubby tree like texture going on back here. This is like what we have done a lot in the acrylic paintings. And then I believe we did it some last last time we did the this painting. Yeah, for along here. What you're going to do. So this is just bordering and it's creating space between the vineyard or the not the vineyard the lavender fields and these mountains just going to go along and wiggle my brush up and down on this last little row of lavender here just creating a border 
between the mountain range and the lavender field. Like there's some woods back here. So yeah, I'm just literally wiggling my brush up and down. Think of it like you're painting a heart rate monitor or a sound wave. And we need to get that darker shading on our right side of our mountains, which we'll do in just a bit. I want to get through this green first before it dries up and I have to remix it because I've remixed it like, I don't know how many times. <laughs> a lot. So this can be uneven. In fact, it looks better if it does just sort of blend into the field a bit. So it looks less like there's an HOA sending people out to clip this all and make it perfect. We don't want that. But we do want some green along the road here. And I even have a bit down in here, but you can definitely see through here where I've got some green at the edge of this lavender field. It's almost like it's just bordering the road. Very similar to what we did back here, but just border the road. And you can overlap into the road. That's no biggie. In fact, probably looks better to have a few little patches of green stuff growing into the road. If you want to put some green down in here, you can. Not too much, because we do want to have the, the, um, the idea that the sun is lightening this up a bit. This is the stuff I love doing. I don't know why it's just, it's easy and it has such a tremendous effect on the painting. Feel free to take a little water on your brush and just kind of blend this out into the road, sort of smudge it in. Mine's pretty dry, so it's not really smudging in much. Maybe I'll add a little more. And then before I switch gears, I'll I have to mix more color. Before I switch gears, I'm going to have a look and see if there's any places I need to add more green. You can add a slightly different shade of green. This is where I just mixed some without brown in it. So it's blue and yellow, makes more of the teal color. Because obviously just like dirt, your greenery that grows around, there's lots of different shades of green going on with that. That looks pretty decent. It works. Let's see how we're doing. Coming along. Yeah, looks good. I'm going to now shade the right side of the mountain. So here and here, that's just a little bit blue or purple. We definitely want it darker than this side is because it's going to be in shadow. This is gonna be where the light is hitting. You could technically brush a little yellow over here if you wanted to see a bit of the sun on there. Let, let me do that first. Let's see how it looks. I'm surprised I didn't do that on the original. Oops, why am I opening India ink? I swear I reached for yellow and I don't have a lot of room. Let's see what it looks like if I brushed a little yellow here. I'll be the guinea pig. Just a tiny bit on the tip of the bristles. Maybe a little water. I mean, it didn't hurt it. It's not bad. Not a lot though. It's real easy for it to take over and get you get a muddy color. But this does definitely give the impression that the sun is shining down on that spot. And it was 100% not necessary. <laughs> Just me going extra. All right. Let's go ahead and mix a bluish violet for this. So I've got my plum violet. Put it up here in my little mixing area. Wash the brush. And let's start by throwing just a little bit of blue. A little bit goes a long way. And I can I can see comparing that this is very close to that color. Let's see how it is with this. 
Okay, good, it's darker. So what I wanna do is I create this slightly curved line like that, and then I'm gonna brush it this way. So I don't want that line to just be a line there. We wanna brush it out. You may or may not need to put a second coat of paint on. I could add a tiny bit more blue in there, just looking at how this, when I spread it out, looking at how it went. You could have it streaky too. The streaky areas would be, you know, some, some, some areas of the mountain that maybe there's more of a canyon or cavern or maybe that there's some rocks or something like that that's creating more depth and darkness. You can kind of uh, play around with this line here. I could sort of blend that in a bit more just with water if it feels too harsh. And then I don't really have to do it here. I've got these little areas that I could brush some in, but the way mine worked out, I guess I could, like this one sort of curves that way. Making decisions on the fly. There we go. Yours might be a more subtle color change. Like I feel like this one's a little more subtle than that one. Or it can be pretty harsh, pretty harsh difference. It's up to you whether you want high contrast or lower contrast. Just remember you can always sort of smear, smear things and blend things with water. I feel like I don't like this where it's suddenly really light right there. It just doesn't look quite right to me. So I'm gonna smudge some of this darker, almost like this mountain's creating a, casting a shadow on this one, which technically it would be. So that's probably why I didn't like that. It just didn't seem right because it wouldn't be right. I'm happy with that. That worked. I want to get, I want to deepen up some of this. So I've got, well, I did, I have a little bit of this bluish purple left that we did here. I'm going to use my number two brush and I'm just going to, in the, the bluish purple areas here, I'm just going to dab little dots and things in here just to add texture. So it's not just plain, just painted on there plain. This is going to make it look like there's actually three dimensional objects growing here. Just dabbing it on, almost very similar to what we did back here, but just a smaller version. And you don't have to do it everywhere. You could have some spots that are left just the light purple or the lighter lavender, I should say. But we're adding some dimension. And we'll add some dimension to these reddish ones here that ended up looking almost pink. My mountain range is a little bit larger in the new one and the lavender field is maybe just a little bit smaller. Funny. So I washed and dried my brush and I'm going to use a sort of a dry brush technique with just the plum violet, not mixed with water, not mixed with any other color. And that's how I get these almost grassy like shapes. So let's see how that looks. This is on top of the reddish pink lavender that's in here and look at that that looks really cool i'm glad that that worked out i was wondering how how close my color was <laughs> just little dabs dots little dot dots little dab <laughs> little dabs and dots it's saturday i can't think it was a long week we shipped all of our go boxes 
this week and all of our uh, watercolor subscriptions that were left. A couple of those are in back order. If you haven't gotten yours yet, I'm just waiting for it. I had to order more Posca markers and they have should have shipped from the uh, art store I get them from. It's just there's a lot of shipping delays right now. With everything, things are taking a bit longer, but you know, we're dealing with it. I really do love how most people have been super understanding. You know, my sister owns a pizza shop over on the east side of Portland and people have been so supportive of her. She was closed for a while because just trying to figure out how to completely switch gears in the business and being forced to close, but doing takeout, it requires, you know, a whole different ordering type of system. And people have been very nice. So I thank all of you guys for that, for being so understanding. We're, we're in a situation with the uh, quarantine that we can't quite, we've never been before, can't quite understand it. And um, I feel like people are being very patient. So thank you for that. And thank you for supporting us so that we can continue <laughs> having a business. The online stuff has been a challenge for us too, but it, it's a fun challenge. Definitely in a lot of ways we're learning. We're learning and you're learning. <laughs> so if you feel like you want to go back in and add any more deeper green, I'm just doing brown and blue, maybe a little bit of yellow. So it's a very brownish color. As the watercolor dries, it dries kind of a little bit lighter in some areas. So sometimes I'll just retouch it up with a pop of a slightly different, maybe slightly darker green. And you can do that here too. You got me areas there that you feel like could use some help. Do as many shades of green as you want. Pretty happy with that so far. Let's go ahead and get the ruts in the road on. And that was just straight coffee brown, if I remember right. Like I said, I didn't take pictures because I just got in the zone. But I'll go ahead and just create some really uneven ruts. And they would be a little wider down here and then thinner as they get further away from us. And you can take a little water on top and smear those in. There's one rut. And the second one, so whether it's a tractor or a car or whatever, something has been driving along here. And that's what I wanted it to look like, like they were tire ruts. My road on this new one is a little bit smaller, but I feel like the ruts ended up better. <laughs> this one's like, oh, it's been pouring down rain with a flash flood and then it dried and then it poured down rain again and then it dried and it's, it's like really uneven. How about we get a riff on our building? It is not straight red. It is red toned down with a little bit of the coffee brown. I apologize if this is blocking too much. Let me know in the comments if I show you the original too much. <laughs> I try to do that, but then I think, well, maybe they just want to follow what I'm doing. I'm going to take a little with my number two brush, a little red, pop it up here, wash the brush, pick up a little coffee brown. And that is going to tone it down to being more of a natural, less in your face red. And I'm gonna take and fill in this area, this little triangle here, carefully. And then I'll trace along here. And down here very slowly, very carefully. I've never been to Tuscany and I think it would be such a neat place to visit once we're allowed to travel. I'd want to also go see all the art in Rome that I learned in art and architecture that I learned about in art history class in college. That was one of my favorite classes. I'm gonna add a little bit more brown to a patch of this red, 
So it's just a little bit deeper and I'm gonna go over this. So this little triangular shape is away from the sun. And I'll make it overhang just a bit. And so it might be a little deeper in color. Then I will wash the brush and we'll tack windows. The windows on the Tuscan Villas are very small, square, plain windows. And so that's what I painted. I had, did like a row across the top and then a row across the bottom. They're all done with just the golden brown. I didn't even really add water to it. That keeps them on the darker side. So I just sort of uh, loosely paint little squares. By loosely, I mean don't, don't make it too perfect. For one, it's really hard to do. And the other thing is it actually looks more right with the painting if you don't try to make perfect squares. That's what photographs are for. I'm glad to finally get this one done. I've had, like I said, a crazy week with getting the subscriptions out, which we have quite a few subscribers, so it's a lot of packing. Right now, all of my employees are on unemployment. And in fact, because of the way it worked out, they're making a little more money on unemployment uh, than they would working for me. So they're gonna stay on unemployment until, you know, we're, we're ready to have them back on our, giving them their regular work hours. But right, so right now it's just been myself and Paul packing up all the boxes and Filling all the little bottles of paint. So this this video, I meant to get it out a week ago, but that's all right. It's time to paint the poppies. We're getting really close. I actually really like the new one. Um, I feel like maybe some of the colors are a little more toned down. I don't know. There's something about it I like more. Maybe I just I really like this area a lot. So we're gonna paint the poppies, and then we'll do some of these little darker shapes that I said earlier were either rocks or stumps, just something to throw some contrasting things in here. Now the poppies are going to be small as they get away from us. So real tiny red dots back here. In fact, you can't, you don't put centers in all of them because they're not all facing towards the person who's looking at the scene. Like some of them, the black centers are gonna be facing towards the villa. And they're quite a bit larger down in here. I do tend to start with the larger ones. And then just as I get up about here, I'll switch to the number two brush and make smaller ones. And they're literally just blobs, just blobs. Let's go ahead and mix a little water and red together. Not a lot of water. It's pretty potent red. And literally think of them like amoeba shapes. You can do some small dots in there mixed in with these pink blobby amoeba shapes. And make sure that you have some that overlap each other because they will do that in nature, especially in a field of flowers. I think mixing the occasional little dots in here looks good in the end. So you can see I have that here, little dots around that rock. You can use just straight poppy red without water mixed in it. That's gonna give you some really potent red poppies. And you would have that probably in the foreground more than you would back in here. If you're painting amoebas, <laughs> you're doing it right. In fact, when I, we do have a Tuscan painting that we do with acrylic paint in the studio. And that's exactly what I tell the students. We're painting amoebas. Here where you go over the green, they're gonna be deeper and darker. So I do love that. As I'm getting over here, I'm starting to climb up the hill a little bit. So as you're going up the hill, you make them a little bit smaller. Honestly, when you put the black dots in the center, they look like poppies. They're just sort of impressionist style right now because we're not like painting perfect little like, you know, five petal things. If you want to do a few of those like that in there, feel free to, but there's no need to. 
If you've got the time though, and, and that's something you want to practice, go for it. Have a look at some poppies on Pinterest, poppy paintings, whatever helps you. I'm going to switch now to my number two brush. I'll just refresh it in some water, dip it right straight in the red and come up here and just primarily doing littler dots. And do have the occasional, like maybe this is a stand over here that is spread out from the others for whatever reason. They're antisocial poppies for their quarantining. <laughs> They're going to be just little dots way up here by the house. As they dry, they'll lighten up a little bit too, probably. Yeah, they definitely will lighten up. Kind of a poppy bloodbath right now. Oh, and look at, see, I've done that because I've been reaching over. So don't do what I do. I should put my palette right along here. I'm still learning too, guys. <laughs> I just have a few blood splatters in the sky now. It's all good. I will turn them into birds. That's what I will do. That's something I learned from Bob Ross. <laughs> And that's the thing with the, with the um, watercolor paint. If something like that happens, a lot of times you're, especially with the red, you're just kind of locked into it. And if I were to try to smear it out right now, I wouldn't want to show that on video because that would be embarrassing. <laughs> so I'll just uh, maybe add some noise down in here with just a little bit of red and some water. By noise, I just mean like little background dots of red, like thick, thick area of poppies. We are getting there. Just a couple more things left to do. One will be the dots in the, for the centers of the poppies, which I'll do when these dry just a little bit. But while I'm waiting for those to dry, I'm gonna paint the little rocks or stumps or whatever those are. Feel free to pause the video if you're still working on poppies. I went kind of fast with them and that, the reason I did that is, well, for one, I've, I've done them several times, but also it keeps me from, keeps my brain from trying to make a pattern. If I go faster than my brain can think. <laughs> so obviously I've got poppies in the sky now. But if you need to pause and work on adding more poppies, feel free to do that now. If you're ready to move on with me, I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to mix brown, so the coffee brown and India ink. I'll use my number two brush. Remember how much this India ink adds. <laughs> it's gonna turn black really fast. So just do a tiny bit and then add a little water. This one, I don't want it to be super watery. It's gonna be a fairly opaque paint. And let's just do this little mound here. And that's honestly, I just kind of tap out what looks like a little shrubby shape and fill it in. Later on, if you wanna paint some poppies around that, you can. And then maybe I'll do one across the road here. Could be just a little stand of rocks. Maybe one here. Or maybe it's just some really dark shrubs, pile of rocks, stumps. I try to make them different sizes. It's really easy to accidentally have a pattern. Everything's all the same size. You can come in with just a water on the brush and sort of smudge in the base of these. 
probably would have worked better if they were a little more wet <laughs> before I decided to do that. And then, like I said, if you want to add a few poppies around or in between, why not? Let's do it. These are probably dry enough for the centers. And um, if they're not completely dry, that's okay. They just, it spreads out in kind of a cool way on the, the poppies that are still wet. Now you decide if you want to use the number six brush or the number two for your centers. I just use straight India ink. Just pop it on there like that. So for the larger ones, I'm using the number six, but if that feels too big, go for the number two. Remember, you don't have to put a center in every single poppy. So they, these were still wet, so it kind of bloomed out in a really neat way. Because some of these poppies are going to be facing away. They're not all going to be facing right towards the viewer here. Obviously, smaller poppies will have smaller centers. This one's down here, the big dinner plate size. So again, it will look best if you don't put a center in every single one. Whoa, those really bloomed. I didn't keep my eye on them and they really bloomed. What I'd probably do with those is after it dries, it actually looks really cool, but maybe not necessarily on this sort of painting. Um, as After it dries, I'll probably come in with a little more red and just go around. I had a lot of water on those ones though. It's pretty much a straight glop of water. Almost done here. Then you'll get to watch me turn my bloodbath in the sky into birds. See how that works. Right. Now, after these poppies and the centers dry, if you feel like you need to come in and add any more bit of greenery, tucked in there, kind of like, you know, we did the little grassy stuff with the plum violet over here. You could do that with green in here very easily. Like maybe a few of these way back here that are sort of hanging out there by themselves and you feel like maybe they need a stem, a small, very, very slender stem. You could use a little greenish and come in with a super, there, why not? Ooh, this, I feel like these need some centers, but you know what, I'll just use this color that's on my brush, which is dark enough that from a distance will look like it just has a dark center. All right. Now I'm going to turn these into birds. <laughs> they happen to be like lined up perfectly. That's so weird. I'll probably use a uh, brown, coffee brown. Obviously, I want a tiny bit of paint on the very tip of the bristles so I don't end up with like pterodactyls in the sky. And we'll see how this goes. It's kind of a big bird. There are no mistakes, only happy little accidents that turn into birds. Oh, the, oh this, I need to pinch this brush down. I need a micro brush for this. There we go, I guess that's all right. Not quite pterodactyls, but they're not exactly small birds. They're like hawks looking for field mice or something. <laughs> So then if you feel like anywhere, like I said, anywhere you want to add a little bit of grassy, just little bits of grassy texture, just like we did with this plum violet through here. Maybe silhouetted over the road, that looks nice. It's just adding more detail and that's never gonna be wrong until you get to the point where it's too much. <laughs> 
No, just here and there, a little detail like this goes a long way and it looks great. At least in my opinion, I like it. And that is it. And let me go ahead and untape this. We'll see what it looks like with that border. So I just peel the tape off pretty slowly because I have ripped my paper <laughs> several times. There is some cool reveal thing with, with tearing the tape off at the end. We do some canvas paintings in the studio where we tape the borders off to create a, uh, would you send kind of a vintage travel poster? We've done it in Oregon. We've, we've done Oregon scenes like Mount Hood, Multnomah Falls. And the part where we take the tape away at the end, it's really fun to listen to everybody just be like, oh, it looks so good. Normally I would probably let this dry more before, oops, see, look, it lifted a little paper up. So you need to go a little slower and kind of pull to the side and low. Uh, normally I'd probably let the whole painting dry for a day or at least a couple hours before doing this. It'll help keep it flat. And look at that. I actually really like the new one better. That's unusual for me. <laughs> I'm usually like, uh, while I'm teaching, you know, things happen that, that I can usually control when I'm painting by myself. Like, I don't think normally I would get splatters on there too much, but so I ended up with birds. It didn't end up being a tragedy, worked out pretty good. But look at that beautiful border. I just think that's really neat. Now, if you have your little micron pen and you want to do some little designs along here, let me see if I have one in here. Probably not. Usually I do, I have a different color one. I have kind of a burnt sienna. So you guys have a black one. I had bought a color pack at one point, but you could easily do just to have fun with your markers. You could do a whole little border of fines with leaves. I'm just gonna do this one side where normally I would, I would go on all four sides. Or think of something else that you could put on here. Maybe a border of little daisies or if you want to hand draw poppies, good luck. I don't think I'd be able to do that without looking at something. But I, I think that a little border of leaves is fun. This is where we get to combine the pen and the watercolor. Oh, look at that. That's Cool, I like it. I'm gonna give it to my mama. So thanks for painting with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you had a lot of fun and um, that you keep practicing, keep playing around with your watercolors. And we'll uh, next week, we'll be doing this one. Next week, we'll get started on the India ink. I wanted to start off with one that's easier and then We'll do this final one that's probably the, the more difficult. It's not necessarily difficult. That one, this one has the template, which we'll trace. It's just a, there's a lot going on in it. So there's a lot of little branches, a lot of stars, we've got the moon, the owl, everything. It ends up looking super duper cool. But uh, I saved this one for last. So next week I'll film this one. It's pretty easy. And it's just all the Indian ink in different tones, thinned down with water and yeah. It's been fun. Thanks for joining. Um, if you want to subscribe, that really helps our viewership. And if you uh, want to see when we post next, you can click the notifications bell and you'll be notified every time we post a new video. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys next time.